All right. Thank you for joining us and welcome to our chat for the week. Just a couple humans talking about AI. Um, I'm Steve. I lead the field engineering team here at Wallaroo, and I'm joined by the lovely Martin Bald, who leads our community team. Thank you for joining us today, Martin. Hey, thanks, Steve. Uh, good to be here. Uh, and um, Friday afternoon, uh, trying to keep the brain going <laughs> uh, for a little bit longer, a couple more hours. But yeah, uh, good to kind of chat about AI. Awesome. And so the topic that we wanted to talk through today was uh, what having a lean and nimble AI team really means, why organizations are striving for it, something we hear a lot about uh, yeah. these days with the rise of Gen AI specifically. And so um, that's today's topic for conversation. So Martin, what, what do you think? What does it actually mean these days to be uh, a lean AI team or a nimble AI team? I, I think it's, uh, I mean, part of it is the culture of the organization. You know, if you have team silos or role silos, I think that's that sort of inhibits, you know, any sort of nimbleness or agile or things like that. And, it, and those teams, if they're, you know, working in the silos or head down, and if there isn't that culture to kind of cross group, collaborate, share and things like that, it, not just for AI, but for anything, I think that's, you know, where things start to, you know, break down or they get bogged down. It's like kind of walking through, you know, heavy mud. Uh, and I think the other thing is processes that comes with that. So, you know, along with that culture is that collaborative behavior and established processes, you know, whether it be, you know, like a, a DevOps process of we've seen or if folks have established MLOps with that sort of closed loop feedback mentality. I think those are the things that will inhibit, uh, you know, that agility and that speed, uh, you know, to get uh, things done. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and you know, I mean, thinking about, you know, why you strive for a nimble team, right? At the end of the day, it comes down to, okay, this is a super fast moving space. There's different things that are happening all the time. Uh, we need to be ready to adapt to all of these external things that are out of our control, right? Uh, a, a new chip comes out, a new model gets released, and there's some breathtaking results that we need to, you know, adapt to, and we need to adopt that as, as a strategy. And so I think it's interesting that people tie lean and nimble um, together, right? Because, you know, everyone wants to be nimble. How yeah. you get to nimble is the question. A lot of people think it's lean. And I think that that's true to a point, right? So, you know, if you have too few people doing all of these different functions that encompass AI, everything from model development, the training, the operation side, the production, the maintenance, um, at, at a certain point, there's diminishing returns of being too lean. And yeah. then you get to that sweet spot where all of those bases are covered, everything is humming along and adding more layers to it just starts to slow the machine down because you get that bottleneck of um, yeah. of that communication and right and those things kind of rippling their way throughout the the organization. And so I think that you know it makes sense to try and, and keep those things um, you know lean to to a point in order to maintain that agility in such, uh, a mm -hmm. fast uh, moving space. And, and to your point, you know, I, th I think that is, uh, you know, partially around the culture of how do we move fast? How do we continue to, to adopt these things? And, yeah. and ultimately it's all in the name of being able to, to be more efficient, right? How do I cover these bases yeah. in a way that makes everyone happy and, and kind of allows uh, us to, to move quickly? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think the, in, I mean, just from the limited, uh, you know, customer engagements I've been in in my previous uh, company or when I worked for Microsoft is, you know, I I I experienced these things where, you know, you're going through a project and you know you have the stakeholders there, but they would, you know, bring in certain teams at certain points, and so you would make this progress, you get some momentum going, and that'd be oh stop, we need to bring in this security team or we need to get this team whereas if that is those stakeholders and you know not to get too rigid about it but if you have a race and you have that governance in place then you know that helps okay we need to talk to these people now and uh, that's up next and so you can be very proactive about that and keep that momentum moving in the right direction instead of that kind of stop start stop start process yeah i think that's right i think a big part of it is like the processes that we put in place. And it's also about the the tooling and kind of division of labor on the technical side too, because there's some things that, um, you know, some of these bases that you need to cover 
really requires all of these different skill sets and it requires different experiences. And more importantly, you know, at the end of the day, it's an organization of people, right? And people have the different things that they enjoy working on and, yeah. um, you know, where they want to spend their time. And so, you yeah. know, you, you have, a, you know, a data scientist responsible for making models. They don't really want to spend time learning a tool like Docker, right? Even though that might help them to cover one more of those bases in that life cycle. Mm -hmm. And similarly, you know, if you show a, an ML engineer, all of the web of notebooks that most of us know and love as we're developing these models, probably make them lose their mind, right? Like it's yeah. just, there's so much stuff going on everywhere and it's just not production ready at all. And so, you know, really kind of treading that line of, you know, we want folks to be fluent across this, but we also want them to spend their time where their strengths are and where their interests are is, I think, you know, one of the key challenges, at least on the technical side, yeah. uh, you know, in, in terms of getting these teams to really be able to be nimble and be as efficient as possible. Yeah. And do, do you see it from, you know, your standpoint of, you know, maybe there's folks that have never worked together, you know, because ML or AI has never been part of the strategy. And so all of a sudden, you know, the DevOps team or IT ops, they have to work with MLEs. And, then, you know, they're like, who are you? Like, I'm the ML engineer. It's like, well, what do you do? Like, do, you come <laughs> a, do you come across that or, you know, in your engagements? Yeah, I think to a certain extent, right? And I think that's just true for like organizational structure and management more generally is like, it, it always helps to give the appreciation to have like a day in the life, right? So like, yeah. you know, really put yourself in someone else's shoes and, and understand yeah. what their needs are. And, and that's just helps teams to work better together in general to understand, you know, what the main driving factors for this other person's job function are, what makes their life easier, what makes their life harder, uh, yeah. to figure out how to be kind of a good a good partner to them. But yeah, to your point, there are these parts of the organization, especially in in younger organizations. Well, I guess at the at the ends of the spectrum, right? In younger yeah. organizations where everyone physically knows each other, but they may not fully understand what all goes into some of the processes that they're taking on and where they're likely to intersect in the yeah. future. And then in larger organizations where, you know, to your point, IT or DevOps is kind of just this, uh, you know, far off land that has a hundred people in it or a thousand people in it or whatever it may be. And you mm -hmm. don't really know what goes into their day to day. And so, yeah, you know, you get to a point where anytime you're doing something for the first time, like putting an AI model in production, you know, that's kind of the first time that a data scientist and an MLE and, um, you know, potentially folks on the IT side, other folks to do with architecture might all have to actually sit down and kind of shake hands about something for, for the yeah. first time. <laughs> yeah, it could be the first time they meet, depending on the size. Of exactly, the yeah. <laughs> how long have you been? I've been here 10 years. Like, how do you know? You know it. <laughs> but and the, the other thing uh, that I was thinking of, you know, sort of, talking about sort of nimbleness and all that sort of stuff is, is, you know, how... How does that help folks? You know, what's the best practices? You know, if you were to say, hey, what are the three things you must do? Uh, or we would advise you to, to you know, get yourself off on a good footing uh, with a project. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. It, it, it's, 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 you know, it, it's one of those things where at the end of the day, you know, the, the key value at the end of being nimble is being able to, to move faster. It's being yeah. able to say, great, you know, I have this thing um, in the pipeline and then, you know, my customer comes out with a new requirement or this, this exciting new product feature we, we want to launch uh, or, you know, completely external, right? Um, you know, this breakthrough innovation has just happened and we want to figure out how we can work with it. That is ultimately, you know, what we're, what we're trying to drive in terms of how we, you know, set down that path and, and, you know, some, some ways that we can set that project on, on the right path, you know, from, from the onset. Um, first is, is just having a clear definition of those requirements and what we actually need to get done for this to be successful. You know, what, mm -hmm. to your point about process, right? Who, owns what, what are those specific things that need to get done? Why do they need to get done? And ultimately, how are we going to measure them, them being successful? It's yeah. a huge part of that, that, that project. And then figuring out the best way to cover those bases, right? Okay, great. We know all the things that needs to get done. What people or teams are going to cover them? What job functions, you know, map to these things? 
Yeah. And then the third is really just then optimizing that, right? Like, yeah. great. So we have the things that we need to do. We have the value that we're trying to drive. We have the ways to measure it. We have the people that we're going to use to cover that, or the, you know, we know the skill sets that we need to cover that. Now, how can we do this as quickly as possible? And yeah. that comes down to, you know, circling all the way back to what we talked about at, at the beginning, right? I have these bases I need to cover. What is that fine line, that optimal point where I'm not, you know, running so lean that I'm making folks do things that, maybe they're, they're not the most efficient at, right? That I'm making folks, um, you know, take on things that require a large amount of overhead for them to, to get up to speed enough to do that. And, but also not so large that I have so many additional people that it becomes hard to manage the simple day-to-day tasks like sync ups, team meeting, yeah. just getting a status check on, on where these things are. And so finding that optimal point of great, how can I cover all these bases in a way that doesn't make anybody uncomfortable, but also doesn't add anybody that we don't need to, um, to make sure that that plan actually gets executed on in a, in a timely fashion. Yeah. And I think it's probably, a, a, you know, when you mentioned the lean, I think it's, uh, could be construed as a sensitive topic right now with the tech job landscape where people are thinking lean means, uh, you know, they're going to cut people in the team and it's going to be, you know, the core of this and I'll miss out, right? And so it's it's very important the way you word that and position it, you know, for the team and the company. Yeah, exactly right. And so lean doesn't mean a lean team necessarily. It means lean in terms of the amount of effort that's necessary yeah. to accomplish a task, right? Yeah. And so it's, 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 it's you know, um, in the sense that we have the folks that we have, if we can get these operations, these projects to be leaner, then we can take more projects. Exactly. Yeah. You know? It doesn't mean lean doesn't mean less people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Le- <laughs> lean means less people hours for a project. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. That's good. And um, yeah, I think uh, the, the other thing is, you know, when we see successful projects, especially in AI space, you know, we, we see a lot of the, you know, these stats from Gartner are about hey, 90% or so, projects fail to get into production and and so on but with the ones that do you know what are the success factors behind that yeah absolutely and i would say that the the success factors on you know these ai projects that that actually do generate value it are are the ones where um you know to our point about everybody shaking hands i'd say being able to make that handshake successfully is a huge part of actually being able to have an AI project be successful, right? Mm-hmm. Having that, you know, the data scientists be able to say, you know, what went into production at the end of the day is something I feel confident about that I feel like, you know, the statistical results that I got that made me think this was a good idea in the first place are still true after we've, you know, crossed that that chasm over into the production landscape that, you know, the, the MLE is happy that, um, you know, all of the, um, you know, re- the representation of that model is sufficiently performant, that it meets all of their needs, that the architecture is in place for it to be reliable, robust, scalable, um, that the IT and security teams feel confident that that their considerations are, are covered as well, right? So most often times that these projects stall or stop, we see, or, or what I've seen working with, with folks is really just that one of those things doesn't happen, right? There, there's not enough communication. There's so much back and forth that um, you know the time is spent writing and rewriting and rewriting these requirements and or you know these portions of the project until it just fizzles out, right? You right. run out of money, you lose momentum. It's no longer relevant. People just get frustrated and give up. Whichever yeah. one it ends up being, all <laughs> results back from just that lack of handshake, that lack of you know kind of holding hands throughout that process. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. You know, again, like you know, like. Just that, you know, some of the projects I've worked on, one in particular, uh, I think just in the pre-production, it was about six months, you know. But then, you know, production wasn't even part of the conversation. <laughs> it's like, okay, what do we do when we get to the, you know, the end? Here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the real world is an afterthought, right? It's a, <laughs> It can be sometimes. Um, yeah. No, awesome. Definitely. Awesome. Great topic. <laughs> and it's... Uh, like I said, it's, um, you know, there's, I guess there's companies that are looking to try and solve this, uh, you know, with it, you know, I guess with the hype that we see and, uh, and it's important to, it's not just a technological, uh, you know, hey, let's just plug this in, it'll work, right? If the foundational elements are not there for the, the teams, the people, the culture, the processes, 
then it's probably off to an on start, uh, you know, and, and unfortunately it'll be, you know, either self or failure uh, and or take a really long time and someone will get disillusioned and cut the budget on the thing, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, we can't have good uh, AI systems come to production without, you know, the people underlying that who, you know, really need to have tighter than ever communication, cooperation um, in, in such a, a fast moving space. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Great to chat with you, Steve. East Coast, West Coast, together. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Martin. We'll talk All soon. Right.